distinguished, distinguished brother and brother and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me the greatest pleasure as worshipful master of Machine LOL 503 to welcome you here tonight and this evening. Most, not only a momentous occasion for our lodge, but for the village of Brasheen, the great district and the local community. Our lodge chaplain brother David Stone will now lead us in a portion of scripture and in prayer. Psalm 61st Psalm 61st says, You have been given a daughter, or in this case an arch, to those who fear you, that may be displayed because Let's all unite our hearts in prayer. Let's all pray together. And Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening that we can gather together here in the center of the village to witness the opening of this arch. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you for all who have come. We thank you, Lord, for this arch and for what it represents. We thank you, Lord, for the resemblance, Lord, that are tied to that arch that remind us of the faith that we have committed to us to defend. We see in those emblems, Lord, a cross. And Lord, that cross also reminds us of the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And we thank you for that faith. And Lord, we just pray for all in this village today, Lord, that they might come to know the Lord Jesus Christ through faith. And Lord, we also see a symbol there, an emblem that reminds us that the work that was carried out on the cross was finished. It's a finished work. And that means that we simply have nothing to do uh, to, to be saved, to know the Lord Jesus Christ personally. But Lord, we simply to come by faith and repentance and put our trust in Him. And so Lord, we want to commend this arch uh, uh, this evening. And we pray, Father, as we meet here, that you will bless it. And as people go up and down the village and look at it, Lord, that they may look at those emblems, Lord, and be reminded of what it really means. We thank you that we can say in Philippians 1 and 21 that Jesus Christ is Lord. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The project to design and build this beautiful arch has been in the planning since 2019. Tonight, I am delighted to say, since the completion of this project, as we open the arch, our best thanks has to go to the Fabrite Facades and Voluntary for an efficient job both on the state work and on the ground work. As you can see, folks, if you have your eyes uh, up towards the arch, you can see there are seven emblems in total. The Platinum Jubilee, starting on the far side, logo of the Grand Orange Lodge of Ireland, which was commissioned and designed to celebrate and commemorate our Sovereign Lady, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Generation after generation, she has led by example in her devotion to duty and serving this great United Kingdom. Long may she reign. Next across we have Rasheen RV P45, which is the seventh oldest black preceptory on the island of Ireland. And having been our partners practically and financially in this project, we thank them here publicly tonight. We congratulate their worshipful master and Sir Knights on achieving this momentous milestone of 175 years on the road this year, and we wish them every blessing in the years ahead. The next emblem across brings us right to the heart of what it means to be an orange man. To have a sincere love and veneration for his heavenly Father and a humble and steadfast faith in Jesus Christ, believing in him as the only mediator between God and man. The emblem depicts an empty cross, which is a symbol that no more sacrifice is required for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus has paid it all. It is finished. In the centre we have our own Lord symbol, under the crown, as a sign that we are not only united under the crown of heaven and the kingship of Christ, but showing our determination to aid, serve and protect our Protestant sovereign when so called upon to do. Next, we have the Apprentice Boys of Derry symbol, depicting the names of fallen members of the Shame Branch named in this war memorial. Finally, we the supreme sacrifice to earn the freedoms we have today. Alongside that, we have the Orange Wick Memorial symbol. During the period, now somewhat benignly referred to as the Troubles, a high proportion of our members served in this country. Our members served in the security forces during a 40-year terrorist campaign. 339 members were murdered during these years, almost 10% of the total victims of the Troubles. 
Nearly half of our murdered members were serving or had served with Ulster Defence Regiment, while a quarter were current or former members of the Royal Ulster Constabulary. Over 600 children were bereaved as a result of the loss of a parent who was a member of the institution. In addition to those murdered, many hundreds of our members have suffered life changing physical, mental, and emotional injuries as a direct, direct consequence of the terrorist campaign. There's more than half of those killed were singled out because they were serving in the community and the security forces. Others were targeted simply because they were Protestant and members of the Orange Institution. We must never forget. Last but by no means least, the man, some would say, started all the valor in Ireland is King William III, Prince of Orange, whose name we associate with memory we cherish on the 1st of July 1690 in the banks of the Boyne defeated the combined forces of Humbury and Murray in this country. I would now like to call upon the wife of our worship master, Mrs. Grace Stone, to come to Ribbon and officially open the arch. Sisters, can I have uh, the members of um, 503 who are about on the banner, please, for a photograph just below the arch before we head on on our parade this evening? Thank you. <laughs> 